My name is Reverend Dr. Ann Armstrong, Deaconess of the Healing Church in Rhode Island. I'd like to call your attention to this um, short handout that I gave you. And I want to say, first of all, our church uses cannabis in the John chapter 6 sense of Eucharistic sharing, which you might call recreational or spiritual. We have a total biblical justification, and we are in communication and in communion with Church of uh, Roman Catholic Church. I am Roman Catholic. My colleague is, is a Jew and a Mason. I'm originally Jewish. Our biblical understanding of cannabis is that cannabis is the plant throughout all of scripture and much of scripture is based on it. We've been in discussion with the Catholic bishops about this and indeed we took a foot pilgrimage to DC when the Pope was there and we asked him about cannabis in the Bible. In return, he sent this plaque, unmistakably manicured cannabis bud. The Pope has spoken, cannabis is good medicine and God wants us to have it. We've been to federal court. Our court case is called CA 15-215. It's currently under appeal. And we've already got the concession from Judge Mary Lisi that our church's use of cannabis is not subject to the Controlled Substance Act unless we choose to do things like stand out in the park and give it to whoever we feel like. But our private sacramental in the sense of Eucharistic sharing and James 5.14, if anyone among you is sick, call to the elders of the church and anoint them with oil. We interpret that to be cannabis or cannibalism in Hebrew according to the oops, holy anointing oil in Exodus 30.23 that contains cannabis among the other spices if you read the Bible in the original languages. And so, because we are not subject to this taxes or to the laws as church, and because we know that the apostolate of the Catholic sisters throughout history, such as St. Scholastica, St. Hildegard of Bingen, was to heal the sick with cannabis oil, we are setting up these, we are calling them regenerative funding. We can get cannabis medicine for free to anyone, to everyone who needs it, paid for by lowering taxes on the wealthy. So I'd like to just ask you to look at this little black diagram in the middle. The way it works is if an investor contributes some money into a, a, an enterprise zone, they can grow cannabis, make medibles, and donate them to a 501c3 who then gives the medicine away yeah, for free. This it's yeah. better though, it replaces it because this will generate for the state $13.4 million a year in sales tax revenue by allowing the patients to have that money in their pockets to spend on other things. So you really don't need a revenue bill taxing their medicine. Let them have it for free like any other medicine and they'll buy shoes for their kids and books for their kids and they'll save for college and save for houses, go on vacation. Those are all taxable things that the state gets revenue for. Um, not only that, this eliminates any incentive for diversion because the growers will only get paid in the program and the patients get medicine for free. The compassion centers can be this. I hope they want to because otherwise, once we're set up and going, nobody's going to be going to them. So they can also adopt this model. They're free to. It doesn't have to be a church. But in the interim, because the Pope sent us this, we're going to be giving these to the people in our church as alternative tags. And um, we are setting up meetings. I called Peter Kilmartin. I've called the head of the state police and also our town chief of police who already acknowledges our outdoor gardens are not any of okay. the town's compelling interests. I just want to tell you, okay. because you. this is better, it doesn't take away from anyone, it gives to everyone, and I hope that you'll all join me in helping people adopt it. Thank you very much.